Hi, this is going to be a mini tutorial on how to use Google Docs for field research, specifically to conduct a survey. I recommend that unless you're tech savvy, you watch it once all the way through without following the instructions just to see how it works. Then open a second browser window. Of course, the browser is just the portal like Chrome, Internet Explorer, Firefox, or Safari, for example. And using Alt-Tab, go back and forth between the two using the pause button on the video as you do the activities. Okay, let's get started. Open your browser as I have and in the URL line type in docs docs.google.com Now there's another way to get to that as well if Google is your home page, which it is for me, go to More. It's in the same line where you see images, maps, news. You probably use those. More has some other cool things, and the one we're going to use today is Doc. So this is what you see. If you have a Google account, just sign in. If not, you want to click down here to create one. I do have a Google account, so I'm going to go up here, type in my email address, my password, and I will sign in. Once you're in Google Docs, click on Create New. Right here at the left. And from the drop-down list, choose Form. Now you need to name your document where it says Untitled Form. I'm going to call mine Capital Punishment Survey. Now, it's a good idea to tell people why you're conducting the survey because that will increase the likelihood that they're going to participate. So I'm going to write, please participate in a survey I'm conducting for my English 1551 class. It will only take a few minutes. Please respond by Friday, 11-5. Thank you. Keep it short and professional. This is a good place to point out that it would be smart to get started early if you're going to use survey results in your essay. This gives you adequate time for people to respond. Now what's nice about Google Docs, though, is it collects all the information for you and even throws it into an Excel spreadsheet and that means you can easily create charts, but more on that later. Now let's add some questions to our survey. Google Docs gives you several choices of question types. Text, which has a short answer blank. Paragraph text, which gives you your respondents room to reply with a greater detail. Multiple choice, which is more restrictive but easier to quantify when you're done check boxes which allows people to check which one they want or even more than one response choose from a list scale which allows respondents to rank or rate something and grid and these are all pretty self-explanatory so for our practice survey I'm going to do something a little special it's called a restrictive question. A restrictive question is designed to split respondents into groups. It routes them so that they can only see the questions from a specific question pool. I can even eliminate those with a particular response from participating further in my survey if I like. So this is cool if you want to, say, interview only college seniors or only those who cook or those who favor gun control, and so on. 
For example, I want to ask different questions of my respondents who are pro-death penalty and those who are not. So my restrictive question is simply, do you agree with capital punishment? I'm going to select a multiple choice format, and my choices will be yes, no, and not sure. So rather than waste the time of those against it, I can eliminate them from the survey in just one question. At the same time, I can determine the percentage of respondents for and against the death penalty. And this technique has lots of potential. So let's type our first question. Mine will be, are you in favor of the death penalty? I want it to be multiple choice, so I choose that from the drop-down list. And my options are going to be yes, no, not sure. You don't want to put people in a position where they have to respond when they might not want to say uh, yes or no. Because I want a restrictive question, I'm going to click the box, go to the page based on the answer, and this pop-up comes up that reminds me that I need to make a page break when I'm done, so I just say okay. And since it's restrictive, I want everybody to have to answer this question so they get routed correctly, so I'm going to make it a required question. You can't skip it. And then I click done. And there's my question. Now, in the add item, I have to create my new page where I'm going to route all the people who say yes. Down at the bottom here, it says page break. And I clicked on that. My page title is going to be Pro Capital Punishment. And because that's so clear, I'm not even going to bother to write in a description for myself. I click on Done, and I've created my first page. Now I need to click Add Item. I'm going to add a question to this page. And this time I want it to be paragraph text. Because I want to find out why uh, people who are pro-death penalty are. I've chosen to make it a paragraph text because I'm thinking I might actually use some of the responses in my essay. So if I came up with the statistics, 60% of the people were in favor. As one respondent said, I think that society will only be safe if there's a death penalty. I can use that quote, so I'm thinking ahead. And my question is done. And there it is on my pro-capital punishment page. Now let's add a page for those in the other group, in my case, not pro-death penalty. Page break. Now notice I am typing not pro-death penalty. And that's because these are all the people who s responded no and not sure. I want to lump them together. And I'm done. Now on that page, I'm going to add an item that is a checkbox. Just to demonstrate to you how you can do different things. And their question is, why are you not in favor of the death penalty? Ethical reasons. type all the things I could think of, and then when you do check boxes, it's a great idea at the end to give another option where a person can actually fill their end. It can be very frustrating for a respondent to only be given certain choices and their choice isn't there. So that's a, a, a less uh, easy to quantify 
but better than frustrating your respondent and maybe making them quit. Then you click Done. Now we have already started our routing. We've got those questions for not death penalty and pro-death penalty. Now I can add questions to either of these pages for either group of respondents. If I accidentally place a question on the wrong page, it's simply a matter of dragging and dropping it to set it right. I do see one problem, though, that here's a sample question which Google Docs put in there for me, and I don't want it. I can edit it by going on the pencil, duplicate it, but what I want to do is trash it with the trash can, so I click that. Then OK, and as you can see, it is gone. Now that we have pages uh, to route people to, we want to add one more page break. And this will be the final page of everyone's survey. In my blank, I can write the word end or last page. For me, I'm going to put thank you, because that's what I intend to have this last page say, um, even if you're routed there after the very first question. Uh, I appreciate you taking time for my survey, something along those lines. And I click Done. And you can see that that comes up as a separate page. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Now what I want to do is I want to tell each page, like when you've finished all your pro-capital punishment questions, I don't want you to accidentally start into the not pro, so I want to route you directly to my end page. And here it is. I'm clicking on it. And I have to do that for each of my pages, so I also want to route the not pro-death penalty people to this thank you page. Once I've done that, now I can go back to my restrictive area, click on the little edit pencil, which will open that question to me. And as you can see, I can now route all my yes answerers to the correct page, which would be the pro capital punishment page, the no ones to the not, the not sure to the not. And so now I have my restrictive question doing what it's supposed to. I click done. And that's the main part. We're almost done, except for style. Finally, let's try and make our paper look professional. We'll click on the themes up at the top, and we have several choices. I will choose one. This is what it's going to look like when it is received by my respondents. I have to next click on Apply up in the left-hand corner. And now my respondents will receive it in that format. The only thing left to do is send it out. I will do that by clicking on email in the same menu line. You are required to send it to me as the instructor, GIDI2 at yahoo.com. Place a comma and any other people that you want to send this email to. And send it. You may also deliver your survey in another way, and that's by embedding it on a website. To do that, click Embed copy the information, the URL information, and cancel that out, and then go to your website and input that there. Now you're ready to see your responses. These will come to you in a chart. You go on Google, you look and see responses up in that same menu line, and here's your chart. Of course, ours is empty because no one's replied yet, but as people respond, they'll be in there. Then you can go into File, and download as an Excel sheet all this information and have it on your computer where you can play with it and put it into charts using Excel. You can also go back to that form, Edit Form, and once it comes back in, in my form format, I can click on See Responses. And you can see that it is going to throw it into a chart. It's just giving you a graphic representation until you actually have results to put into a chart. So it's a very sophisticated program that's really easy to use, and I think it'll help you a lot if you decide to use it 
for your essays. Great job, guys.